All right, guys, it is an unbelievable episode for me today. Today, we are releasing the book, the book, the book. Let's go. Yes, today the book is released on Amazon Rehab Cairo Biz, The Proven System to Build and Grow Your Rehab Chiropractic Business. This book, as I mentioned in today's podcast, is a two-year project started in August 2022, and it is finally, finally, finally live and living color on the internets. And so as I talk about in this podcast, I would really appreciate going to the show notes, click the link. Amazon, if you could go and purchase the book, if you could leave us a five-star review, and if you could post a selfie and tag us on Instagram, I talk about it more in this episode, but that is my ask, my call to action. I would love for you to watch it, listen, see the book, and do the thing, man. I would appreciate it so much. If I provided you any value, that is my, my big ask for you. In today's episode, I talk about the three themes I learned about myself from doing this book that I think you can apply to you in your business, in your life, in your career. And so I hope that through my action and my learning, my education of what I learned about myself, that you can take those lessons and now apply them to you. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I can't wait to see your reviews and your selfies on Instagram. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Business School for the Rehab Chiropractor. Class is officially in session. My name is Justin Rabinowitz, and I am a rehab chiropractor on a mission to teach you, a fellow rehab chiropractor, the exact tools and systems I've used to build my own successful rehab chiropractic practice so you can do the same. I hope you enjoy, and please subscribe. I joined a country club about four years ago, November of 2020. And like at most country clubs, you have a lot of professionals there. So there's a lot of doctors, a lot of lawyers, chiropractors, dentists, and a slew of other small business owners, but obviously people who you know have been relatively successful in their life and their career. And so that's generally the, the type of person that belongs to a country club. So if you are a doctor or if you are a lawyer or a professional, you know, you're one of many in that small cohort of people. So when I joined, obviously I'm one of many and I'm one of the younger members at this club, but a crazy thing happened two years in. There was a charity event and they were asking members to contribute something for the charity for the dinner. So what I did Uh, when I was asked is I took a copy of my first book called Beyond Fitness, which was the book that we hand out to every single brand new patient in my practice, Strive to Move. And we gifted it to every person that came to this charity event. About a week later, one of the employees, Connor, at the country club, he came up to me and he said, he goes, Justin, I didn't know that you were a published author. I took your book and I read it cover to cover. That's awesome. And it was such an interesting moment for me to recognize what people see as valuable, what people see as credible. Because like I said, in that group of people, it wasn't different that I was a doctor. It wasn't different that I was a chiropractor or that I was a professional. But what stood out to Connor was that I wrote a book. I was a published author. I had a physical thing that I put together that was available on Amazon for purchase. And that was what stood out. And it was at that moment, it just reinforced the idea that a book can be something unbelievably valuable from a perception standpoint to your patients on how to stand out in the community and in the marketplace. Which brings us to today, for me in a new business, in the Rehab Cairo coaching business, where we are releasing, we have released officially my book, my first book for the mastermind which is called Rehab Cairo Biz. And so I believe that story for each one of you is a great example of what is one way that you can stand out. And in today's podcast, what I really want to do is give you three lessons. I want to give you three ideas to provide you a little bit of value, a little bit of insight into my thought process on why I wrote a book and potentially how you can take this and use it in your life, in your business, in your clinical practice, in order to build and grow the business of your dreams. So I have three themes or three lessons that I want to share with you as it relates to the book. The first theme is about self-confidence. The first theme is about self-confidence. What my mentor always tells me is that self-confidence is built 
through doing the things that you hate that directly grow your business. Let me say that again. Self-confidence is built by doing the things you hate that directly grow your business. And so I could sit here and tell you that I enjoyed the book writing process. I could sit here and tell you that it was a labor of love. But the reality, I hated most of it, which is exactly the reason why I did it. Because my mentor has been very successful and I believe the things that he tells me. And so when he tells me the way to build self-confidence is by doing things that you hate doing that directly will impact your business in a positive way, there is no better example than that than this book that I've just published. You see, I've now been in the content game for about a decade. I opened Strive to Move in 2015, and from that point, I've done email, I've done newsletters, I've done social media, swipe posts, uh, I've done marketing posts, I've done anything and everything to create content. And if you ask me to rank the things in which I enjoy producing the most... What I would put dead last is long-form writing. Long-form writing for me is the thing that I hate to do, which is why I did it. Because for me, I want to build a life and a business around becoming more confident, become, becoming self-confident. Because business won't get easier, I just become better. I'm going to run into another situation every day, every week, every month, in which I don't like, in fact, mostly that I hate. But if I have the self-confidence that's been built over months, years, decades, because I continually push the business forward by doing things that I hate to do, I know that I'm going to be successful. And so this book, I know it's not going to be a New York Times bestseller. I don't even know how many copies it's going to sell. But today, for me, that is all completely irrelevant. The thing that is most important to me is that I did the damn thing because I didn't want to do it. This assignment, this assignment for me is a, in addition to, when I talk to my mastermind members all the time and they talk to me about a new marketing endeavor they're going to do, or they talk to me about a new location, or they look to do something new. The question I always ask them is, is this in place of or in addition to? You see, writing this book was not in place of doing the other things that needed to be done, the live events and the daily swipe posts and the emails and the team meetings. It wasn't that I took three months sabbatical and wrote this book. This was work that I dedicated in addition to the other work that has to get done to move the business along. And now that I've published the book, the self-confidence that I now have, that I can attack a project that I don't want to do, that I don't think I'm in fact that good at doing, that I can work through it, that I can hire the right people and the right coaches to put me in a position. And now we have a physical thing, a book that has now been published and now is on Amazon and I know will have a direct impact selfishly on my business and selflessly on hundreds of probably hundreds, thousands of people in the Rehab Cairo community, I've gained a level of self-confidence that most people will never get. You know, we say that the work works on you more than you work on it. And so this book will provide value to so many people, but selfishly, it's provided so much value to me to go from an idea, a blank piece of paper, to a fully published book that now sits on Amazon. The process of writing this book for me is one of the more challenging things I've ever encountered. In fact, when I started doing it, all in, I started this project in August of 2022. So as I record this podcast in the middle of June, we're going on two years from start to finish. That is a long time to work on something. Another lesson my mentor taught me along the way, in addition to building self-confidence, he always says, the things that have the most value typically take the longest to do. 
And so for all of you that are looking for quick hits and quick wins and quick likes and vanity metrics, potentially on Instagram, what I always ask is, what are you doing behind the scenes? The thing that might take the longest to get you the ROI, two-year project from start to finish, two years to get it off the ground and get it released. But the thing I'm proud of is that I was able to see it through. I can't tell you how many people, including myself, because this is the second stop and start that I had. I had started this book before and stopped writing it because I got busy in life and blah, 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 all the other BS excuses that I gave myself. But the level of confidence, like I said, the self-confidence that I now have because I've seen it through, because I didn't want to do it, it's been massively important. And so a two-year project finally to fruition has given me a level of self-confidence that I know each and every one of you, I hope each and every one of you can gain in your life and in your business. The second theme I want to speak about is execution. Execution. So I recently heard an interview with, he's nicknamed the Indian Warren Buffett. He is a billionaire with a B uh, investment guy. Again, the Indian version of Warren Buffett. His background, though, started as a business operator like you and I. He was not an investor from the start. He owned and operated businesses. He got them off the ground. He got them going. He scaled them. He sold them. And then after he basically got wealthy building his businesses, he then became on the other side where he just invested in businesses. And in the interview, what was fascinating to me was the story he told about the most important part of being in business, about being an entrepreneur. He talked about how the information is so readily available in the marketplace today, and mentors and coaches are so readily available in the marketplace today. And then he said that the information is almost irrelevant. Because in his experience, what he realized is that he could take his investment strategy, he could literally open up his books and his bank account and investment philosophy, he could show the the business across the street in direct comparison and competition to him. He could literally give them everything, the exact blueprint to be successful. And he said the reality is 99% of people that he shared everything with would not be able to execute. So he said, the number one thing is, I don't care about competition because the information is not the answer. The secret to success is the ones willing to execute at the highest level. And it resonated with me so much, not only for the book, but in our mastermind program in general. Our Business 101 course is a seven-week course that gives everyone the, literally the blueprint. But it always fascinates me to look and see how many people, how many people have varying results. Some people go from 6K a month to 65K a month. Some go from zero to 25K. Some go from zero to 15K. And some go from five to 7K. Everyone makes more money, but the varying degrees in which they do it is fascinating to watch. Like I said, we have people that go from 6 to 60, 16 to 61, 30 to 80. So those are massive numbers. They're unbelievable. And the average is about 13,500 per month. So the information is exactly the same. But the execution on the information is where the money is made. And so when I look at myself in the marketplace, just like you should look at yourself in your marketplace, what I always come back to is that someone could steal the exact way in which I wrote this book. I can tell you who my my mentors and my coaches were. I can give you the outline in which to do it. I can give you the team in which I used. I could even loan you the $12,000 that I spent to have the coach to bring me from zero to published. I can loan, I can give you everything. But the most likely scenario is that you won't do it because the execution is the thing that most people will fail at. There's a reason why there's a 1%. In the U.S., from an income perspective, there's a 1%. It hasn't changed since the 60s. What's the reason? Because there's only 1% of people for the last 80 years, 60 years, 80 years, that have been willing to execute. 
Because execution forever and always will be the thing that will take you from where you are today to the next step. And if there are people ahead of you that are making more money, that are more successful, that are building the business faster than you, the problem you have is your lack of execution. And so when I look at myself in this book, again, going back to why I built self-confidence is because there are many people who hire the same book coach that I did, the same editor that I had, who had an idea of a book and started to write the book. And for the next 15, 20 years, they have the idea of the book and they continue to start to write the book. And for me, what I know that I will hold on to until the day I die is not that I'm the most talented or the most charismatic or the smartest. It's that I am willing to execute at a level that most people aren't. And so when you go to your town, whether you're in Norman, Oklahoma, or you're in Boulder, Colorado, or you're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or you're in uh, East Lansing, Michigan, anywhere in the country or in the world, in Canada, in Australia, where we have members, if you go to any one of those places and you look around and say, man, there's a lot of competition here. All I would say to you is the deciding factor between you being successful or you losing to your competition is your ability and willingness to execute at a higher level than them. Your ability and willingness to execute at a higher level than them. That might come in the form of writing a book and becoming the published author and the celebrity in your town. It might be to execute the sales process in a way. It might be executing a price rise that you know you had to do. It might be hiring and managing people in a way that no one else in your area is willing to do. But the key is your ability to execute at the highest level is what's going to get you from where you are today to whatever level you want to get to. And so I want you to focus. I want you to be aware of your ability to execute at the highest level. You see, for me, the book is just a way for me to be able to teach you and show you guys that execution and that self-confidence are really the themes that I want to promote. That you, if you're listening to this podcast and you've been gracious enough to give me your time, I want to provide you value. And so the ability to build self-confidence, the ability to execute at the highest level, I've done that now through publishing a book. But the themes are the most important part. And finally, the third theme, the third theme about this book that's most important to me that I think it could could provide you the most value is how you choose to stand out. We talked about competition in the execution phase. But the question that I'm always asking myself that each and every one of you listening to this in your car walking, in the gym, at your home, the question that I want you to ask is, what am I willing to do that nobody else is? What am I willing to do that nobody else is? You see, when I started doing this coaching thing, nobody knew my name. In fact, there are people that are in my program today that two and a half years ago, I showed up at Parker at Parker uh, College And Josh Satterley was willing enough to give me an hour on stage. And the first question I asked everyone there is, how many in this room have heard of me? The answer was, no one raised their hand. And I knew that. I was willing to get on the plane and travel halfway across the country and pay my own way there with the potential that I could get on stage for about an hour and start talking to an audience. And the reason I did that is because I've answered the first question is, what am I willing to do that no one else is? Because when I went there and got on that plane, there was no guarantee that anything good would come out of it. There was no guarantee that I would make money. There was no guarantee that I would present well. There was no guarantee that I would even be accepted. Quite frankly, if the seminar didn't go properly and the timing was off, there was no guarantee that I would even get on stage. But the reason I did that is because I know that no one else was willing to. I flew to Dallas, I flew to Austin, Texas, I flew to Miami, I flew to California, and this is a true story, by the way. I flew to California to see a potential client. She was working with me in the short term, and I got to California, and the next day she told me that she was no longer going to work with me. How about that? But the thing that it taught me, as frustrated and pissed off as I was, what I learned in that moment 
was that the reason I'm pissed off is because I was willing to do something to get on a plane and fly across the country 3,000 miles to meet face to face with someone. And then they canceled on me where nine out of 10 people would have said, that's a waste of my time. And so in that moment, what I realized was that I'm willing to do the thing that no one else is. I'm willing to host a live event. I'm willing to spend 70 grand to bring people in. I'm willing to make sure that we put on the best event possible. I'm willing to do those things. This book is another sample size of what am I willing to do to stand out? And I will tell you a secret. I'm doubling down because as soon as this book is out, I literally have a contract ready to write book two. Why? For the same reason, because no one else is going to do it. And so for you that are listening to this podcast, that are in practice, that have a location, that are looking to build your business, that's the challenge I have for you. That question, what am I willing to do? What money am I willing to spend? What planes am I willing to get on? What am I willing to invest in? How long am I willing to prepare for that eval I'm supposed to do? What price am I willing to charge and no one else is willing to do? What risk am I willing to take with hiring the first employee when I might not have the money or the profit in the business? What am I willing to do that no one else is? Now for me, the book, this book, I'm holding it right now. You can hear me flipping through the pages. Every time I look at this book, those three things, this is a physical reminder of the three themes that I've built the self-confidence, that I'm willing to execute, and that I'm willing to do things that no one else is. And every time I look on that damn bookshelf and I hold this book in my hands, that's what I think about. And my challenge to each and every one of you is to go to your town, go to your area, Go to your business and think about how you can build your own self-confidence, how you can execute better than anyone else, and how you are able to stand out from the crowd. It might be a book. It might be education. It might be your preparation. It might be your willingness to leave the home and do the thing all day and all night. It might be your price rise. It might be your hiring. I don't know exactly what it is, and I'm not concerned with it. But if you can answer those questions and you can execute and you can build the self-confidence and you can stand out from the people around you, I promise you, you're going to be way more successful than you ever dreamed of. If nothing else, I'm living proof of it. I'm living proof of it. I'm not that special. So that being said, up to this point, we've had a massive following on social media, people that comment on our videos, specifically that listen to the podcast. And it's been um, really, really great for me to be able to spread my message to US, Canada, and now Australia through a podcast, through social media. And now the next step is a physical copy through this book. And so if you've gotten any value, I just have an ask for each and every one of you. So if you're a listener of this podcast and you know you listen obviously for free, which is means the absolute world to me that you're willing to give up one of your most valuable asset, your time every single week to hear me speak. If I provided any value for you, I have a favor to ask. My favor to ask is that you go on Amazon and you purchase this book. So the book is called Rehab Cairo Biz, The Proven System to Build and Grow Your Rehab Chiropractic Practice. This book is a two-year project. I put a ton of time and effort into it. And after you purchase that book, I would absolutely love it if you could do a couple things for me. See, I know that we've been able to change so many people's lives. I know that our impact now, people tell us every day that we've literally shaped the future of so many chiropractors out there. And the book is another way that I know we can help spread the word and spread the message. There are people that are out there who might want to start by reading it. There are people out there that might not be ready to take the step and join ChiroBiz 101. There are people that might not be uh, ready to execute at that level. And I believe the book is a great first step. There's so much value in this book. And in the next couple of podcasts, I will speak about some things that are in it. But if you trust me enough, I would ask you to go spend the, I don't even know what it's, 15 bucks, something like that, 18 bucks on Amazon to purchase that book. Once you purchase that book, it would mean the absolute world to me if you could write and leave us a five-star review on Amazon. The thing that it does is once you purchase the book and leave a five-star review, you are a verified purchaser and it helps to spread the book and the word out even better in the Amazon algorithm. So I'd love you to buy the book on Amazon and then leave us a five-star verified review of that book. 
And the third thing, the third thing, so that we can continue to spread the message, it doesn't cost you anything, is to ideally take a selfie with the book, a smiling selfie, you and that book, and post it on your Instagram. When you do that, please tag us in it. Tag me in that. I would love to share your profile. I would love to make sure and see that this book is having an impact. And when we do that, it allows us to reach more people that are just like you. See, the best thing for all of us is that uh, rising tides lift all boats. There are more people doing what we're doing in the Rehab Cairo community that are building world-class businesses, that are uh, treating at a level the public and are going to become more aware of our services and start seeking them out. And selfishly, the reason why I built this mastermind program and do all the books and the podcasts and all of that is because it's just something I wish I had uh, earlier in my journey. Because I could be so much further along if I just would have known earlier and I didn't. And so just to review, as a, as a favor, you know, it's the biggest ask I've ever made for people listening to this podcast. And I would really appreciate it if you could buy the book on Amazon, Rehab Cairo Biz. There'll be a link in the show notes. If you could leave us a five-star review on Amazon as a verified purchaser. And then finally, if you could take a selfie of the, with you and the book and tag me in that post it on Instagram. It would mean the absolute world to me. Obviously, we speak in a silo in this podcast. I'm literally in my basement right now speaking to nobody. It would mean the world to me if I knew that there were people on the other end listening. And I would be forever grateful for that. So finally, to wrap up, self-confidence, execution, and how to stand out from the crowd. I hope that provided some inspiration and value to you. And I would love to see and know uh, that you have bought and purchased the book and leaving us a review and posting on Instagram. So that being said, the next few episodes, I'm going to go deeper into the book to t- tell you a little bit more insights, tell you what's in it, give you some behind the scenes access to the process of doing it. And maybe I'll inspire you to write a book for yourself as well. It's a nice moment for me to just stop and pause for all of you that have made it this far and have been listening now for two plus years. Um, I genuinely appreciate your ears, your time, your effort. And I get messages weekly about people who have, you know, literally grown their businesses because of the podcast and have gotten into our world and been inspired to go do the thing. And I, uh, I love that. So I appreciate each and every one of you. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. All right. And one more time for all of those listening, if you are so inclined, I'd love for you to go into the show notes, click the link, go ahead to Amazon, purchase the book, leave us a five-star review and verify purchase, and then post on Instagram. Show us you got it. Show us you're getting value out of it. Tag us in that and take that selfie. I would be forever grateful. Thank you. 